What's going on everybody? On today's project, I'm gonna show you how I built this DIY fire pit table. And I wanna give a huge shout out to easyfirepits.com for hooking us up on this project, but more on that later. Let's get into the video. Hey, what's up guys? So to get our DIY concrete tabletop, the first thing we need to do is build a concrete form so that when you actually add the concrete and let it cure, all you're left with is a smooth tabletop like you're seeing. So in order to create the form for this project, I used three quarter inch melamine that I got from Home Depot. And I started out by cutting the large rectangle for the base using a straight edge and a circular saw to make the cut since I didn't have access to a table saw or a track saw. If it stopped raining, we'd be able to come back outside and make our cut. So let's make it happen. So what I'm cutting right here is the 10 and a half inch by two foot, four and a half inch center insert, which is gonna be the cutout for the pan later on. So here's a look at what I'm cutting. I just cut two of them identically and stacked them on top to get the overall thickness. So what I'm cutting now are the two and a quarter inch side pieces of the form. Then I'm gonna go ahead and screw to the large rectangle base. What I'm showing you here is that you can definitely do this with a large straight edge and a circular saw just by measuring the offset of your circular saw, setting your straight edge with clamps, and then running your circular saw along it. Definitely a lot more tedious than a track saw or a table saw, but it's definitely doable. Once you have all of the pieces of your form cut, it's time to screw everything together. So at this point, I grabbed some screws that I had left over from some other projects and just started screwing the sides of the form to the base of the form, making sure everything was uniform and level all the way across. Once the sides were done, I moved over and I calculated the exact center of the rectangle on the bottom, and then I set the large insert piece within the middle right on top of that line. With the form now completed, I put some plastic down just to account for any concrete drips later on, and then I set the form down on the plastic inside. What you're gonna wanna do now is run some silicone or any kind of caulk along the inside corners. This is gonna help prevent any concrete from seeping through, and it's also gonna give you a nice round over edge when the actual concrete cures. So a trick that I use is I use glass cleaner to spray down the caulk. That way, when you wipe it down any place where the glass cleaner hit, will not actually have any silicone that will stick to it. So it's a pretty clever trick. You'll see what I mean if you try it. The next thing I did is I took some WD-40 and I applied it to the form as a concrete release agent. And at this point, it's time to start mixing concrete. So I mixed that up according to the manufacturer's directions and I used some charcoal dye that I mixed into the water just to give me a darker look. And I'll link all of those tools in the description. Then I added two bags of this Sacrete concrete mix, mixed it up with a shovel in my wheelbarrow and finished it off with a drill mixer just to make sure that the dye was evenly mixed in. Next up, I went inside and I started applying the concrete to the form. I used a shovel to kind of minimize the amount of spillage that I ended up having with the concrete just to prevent a mess and then I spread it out pretty evenly with the shovel there. What you're going to want to do is really force it down into the corners of the mold to kind of prevent any air bubbles or pockets later on and then I went and installed my rebar that I cut previously using some snippers. You can either use steel mesh or just some rebar. I also recommend that you put the steel mesh in about halfway through the concrete so you're not having to force it down like I did. Next up, grab a two x four and screed the surface of the concrete. Any imperfections that you have at this stage, you can fix with a concrete trowel. And then at this point, once you're happy with the finish and how everything looks, I recommend that you vibrate the sides and the top with either a reciprocating saw without a blade or some other device just to make sure that any of the voids or air bubbles are taken care of. Next up, cover it with some plastic to keep moisture within the concrete longer and let it cure for a couple days. Hey guys, before we move on to step three, please consider dropping a like down below to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get back to it. So over the next day or two, while you're waiting for the concrete to cure, you're gonna wanna build the base for your tabletop. So I actually built mine with some metal studs that I had lying around, also because lumber is crazy expensive these days. And I basically built kind of a smaller rectangle and then a larger rectangle on top so that it would be easier to lift it once it was completed. So there's kind of the smaller rectangle and here I am putting the larger rectangle base on top, securing everything together with self-tapping metal screws. So if you decide to build your base with metal studs, C-clamps are gonna be your best friend when trying to actually install these self-tapping metal screws. But I use these and just kind of built up the base. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because you really can build a base out of anything. You can use 
two by four lumber with pallet wood, you can cast it in concrete. So it really is just your choice on how you wanna design One it. thing you need to keep in mind though is how you're gonna get your propane tank in and out. So make sure you account for that in your design. For mine, I installed some drawer slides and I basically created a little sliding door where I could open you know, when I needed to and then close it once the propane was in there. So that's what you're seeing in the bottom left. And then I finished with the frame. So here's a look at the frame and I fully planned on just wrapping the whole thing in cement board and then using some mortar to put on this stone veneer. But I'm worried about how heavy it's gonna be. The tabletop already weighs about 200 pounds. So I was walking at a Home Depot when I saw this LVP on sale and I figured this would be a lot lighter and about $100 cheaper. So I decided to wrap it in that. So as you just saw, the way I attached the LVP to the frame was with construction adhesive and I used some brad nails to secure it in place just until the glue fully cured. For the top part there, that small sliver, I just made some marks and then took a straight edge and marked it all the way across before taking it down and using a utility knife to score it and then snap it with pliers. And I followed the exact same process for the small bottom part there. For the corners, I did something a little bit creative because obviously it's gonna be a really bad butt joint. I found this basically L molding on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. And I cut it to size and then secured it to the corners, again, with construction adhesive. I hate the amount of adhesive I'm using. This feels more like an arts and crafts project than a build, but uh, I used tape there to hold it in place. So at this point, we've given our concrete two days to cure. Let's go ahead and remove the forms and see how it looks. So just unscrew all of the, uh, the form screws and then pry it off from the concrete, trying to be as gentle as possible so you don't actually chip and damage it. As you can see there, I was able to pull off the back piece pretty easily. And then I used a hammer to tap out the center insert. I used tape on the inside there, which is why it broke off so poorly, but it's not a problem because it's on the bottom. Next up, I took the concrete outside and I'm using these concrete sanding pads that I got from Amazon. I'll link them in the description. You just put those on the end of your drill and then keep a hose going to keep the dust down and simply sand down any imperfections on your concrete tabletop. So I did that on the top, I did it on the sides until I was happy with how smooth the finish was. So at this point, go ahead and give the tabletop a final wash down to remove any concrete dust and let it dry. Once it is dry, I recommend that you put on some kind of sealer. I used the Wet Look Sealer by Bear and applied it with a foam brush. And I simply just kind of went back and forth, applied it to both the top and the sides. And I was actually really happy with the look. I think it was quite an improvement to the unfinished concrete and it also adds a significant layer of protection and stain prevention. And I gave our concrete top two coats of this Wet Look Sealer. And then at that point we went and we finally put it on top of the base. This thing is coming together. All right guys, we can finally start talking about installing the fire pit table insert. And to do this, I wanna give a huge shout out to easyfirepits.com for hooking us up with the insert for our project. The easyfirepits.com system came with literally everything I needed for the project and the detailed step-by-step -step instructions made it super easy to install. I went with the in-tank complete kit and I got a 28 inch by 10 inch burner, but they have all kinds of options on easyfirepits.com. It's a great product and I highly recommend it. We have our propane tank, we have our regulator attached to our hose here, that will go to our valve key, and then we have the valve key going to the, uh, the distribution header here, which is obviously housed within the pan. So with that being said, let's get it installed. So to begin installing my easyfirepits.com burner assembly, I first open my access door and put the propane tank within the fire table. Okay, so before I hook uh, the hose up to the propane tank, I'm gonna go ahead and install the hose on the regulator. What you're seeing here, this is a flared connection compression fitting, so you don't actually use thread tape on these. So I have my end right here. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this one on. So once the first connection was made, I took the regulator and I went and installed and hooked it up to the propane tank. Keep in mind that this is reverse threaded to actually attach it to the propane tank. And then I tucked the hose down into the tank. At this point, I have my flared connection fittings for the valve key, and I went and I threaded that on. Make sure you pay attention to the flow direction arrows. And I threaded that on both sides, and then I had to go to the outside of the base and cut a hole for where this valve key was gonna go. So there I am just cutting that through, and you might have to install some blocking on the inside. So I made that measurement, and then I just took a piece of wood, scrap wood, and used it as a piece of blocking, and attached it to the inside there with adhesive. Stuck the valve key on one side, threaded the decorative cap on the other, and waited for that to dry. 
So after giving the adhesive some time to dry, I took the valve key on the inside of the tank and then I went and threaded it through to the outside through the piece of blocking. Then I went on the other side and just threaded on the decorative cap, making sure it was tight. So because this last part is not a flare connection, you're gonna have to use PTFE thread tape and you're gonna thread that on clockwise and then tighten it up with a wrench. And then at this point, there is a large washer that you're gonna thread all the way on to the burner manifold. And that's gonna sit on top of the actual burner pan right there like you're seeing. Then on the other side, you're gonna go ahead and install the second washer, which is gonna hold that burner in place. At this point, you're gonna thread on your 90 degree hose connection fitting, and that has PTFE tape because it's just a threaded connection. Go ahead and grab a wrench as per all the connections and make sure that's tight. And then because this connection is a flare compression fitting, you don't need tape. Lastly, make sure everything is wrench tight and then drop your pan into place. And for the finishing touches, I installed this black fire glass that I got from Amazon. I'll link it in the description. And then I put this windscreen in place that I got from easyfirepits.com. And this project is complete. Hey guys, if this video helped you out, I really would appreciate if you could drop a like down below to help me out with the algorithm. And also consider subscribing if you liked, you know, DIY content like how we built the fire table or how we built the sectional. And next week, I'll kind of show you how I took it and wrapped it all together and turned it into a home movie theater that you're seeing behind me. I really do appreciate your support. It's like 95 degrees outside. This fire is not helping. Let's call it a day and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.